Welcome here. And if you could move forward, because we don't have a microphone, so you know what, I, I don't want to be screaming. I am very happy today, even though the weather is ugly. Well, this is New England. And thank you, everybody, to being here, for being here today. And this is a long wait in work and accomplishment. And we are very happy and very proud to be here today having this event. And I want to thank everybody that was involved in this project. This is a true example of what is Head Start. It's a partnership with the community. It's a partnership between Children Investment Fund, Department of Early Education and Care, George White Funds, that is here the staff, the Office of Head Start, and private foundations. So we are very happy because you all supported the children and the family of this community. You're going to hear from a parent a little bit later. And so we are very glad that you are here. We are very happy. We cannot do champagne, but we could pretend because it's dramatic play and it's early education, so we could do a symbolic toast. So, good. I'm going to take you for that. But anyway, <laughs> and this project, in addition to the funders, was not able to happen without the help of our property department, our staff. So, I I was telling the commissioner that my team do the work, and I just become an MC. <laughs> you know, when you are in early childhood, you have to be ready to do everything. So I want to recognize Heather Gold, our program director. Heather. <laughs> and Flossie Calderon. <laughs> She's one of my deputies. She said, Yvette, if you want, I could take over the logistic and everything of construction. <laughs> So she's the one that worked a lot with property and the architect, Richard, is there, and the contractor. Kristen Hayashi, our other deputy. And we have a lot of program director and the rest of the staff. So welcome all. Enjoy. At the end, we are waiting for the mayor, but we want to keep going. And we will be able to give you some tours. Just one announcement. If you want to see the early head start, you have to put the booties, because we need to have booties to go inside the early head start classroom. Okay? This program was uh, very needed in this community. And, and I'm not going to tell too much of the story, because I'm sure John and Sharon is going to say that. But we were able to serve. Here we serve three classrooms of infant and toddler and two preschoolers. And the preschoolers are still coming on. And it's very much needed in this community. And we are very thankful that we found this beautiful facility, which is, I think, is enchanted, right? If that's the correct way to say it in English. So with no further ado, I would like to introduce, it's my honor, my privilege to introduce my boss. Well, I have two bosses. Well, maybe more, maybe more because maybe these two ladies, they are in a way are my bosses too. So, and John Drew, our president and CEO, and I was just telling them that we have the privilege to have a president and CEO that was a Head Start parent. So he loved Head Start very much. John? I am not slowing down because the mayor's not here. <laughs> but we'll take advantage of that by thanking everybody. You cannot do this without a great team. All the way over. Starting with um, George Robert White Trust Fund. Ever hear it? You know about White Stadium? There's a few other places in town where this fund, which is part of, it's, it's part of the city in the sense that the mayor selects the board members. But this fund is there to help a lot of municipal works. They own this building. So they contacted us, probably Peter or Sharon and John, and said, hey, would you like a building for a buck a year for 25 years? I said, where? Where is this building? It was here. And it needed a lot of work, but it had been an early childhood center of sorts. So, you know, John said to me, Pisa, yeah, we had to redevelop the whole building. But 
the white fund through the mayor, they put up an awful lot of capital money. That's how you get it done. And we were able to, um, John Wells, the white shirt with the gray hair, Peter hanging over here, all of our folks. <clears throat> well, we're doing three other projects and working very much with our regional head start, federal officials who have been wonderful to us, including my friend in Washington. How's she doing? Good? Okay. A former ABCD head start. Anyway, we're connected to a lot of things. Um, we, we're having a grand opening here, but we're already opened. But we wanted to make sure that we were able to bring people together as we do. Parents, people who make it happen, other people who have an interest. It's all about looking and seeing what happens here. What does happen in a place like this? Oh, the little kids go to school. No, that's not it. Not it. Number one, the children are low income. Two, they have parents. And three, and by the way, they come here as early as two weeks old now. Remember, we've gone over the period of years. You don't need a lecture from me, but what the heck. We talked about four or five year old head start kids 50 years ago, 40 years ago. They needed to be in the public schools with some kind of a start that maybe their peers had ahead of them. But over the years, what we found out, all of us collectively, is that didn't start at four. It started a few weeks or maybe pre-birth, brain development. So we needed to make sure we reached down to the families as early as possible. And more of our sites now are taking in all the way down to zero. Not quite zero. I mean, they're born one day. They have to get here afterwards. But the parents come with them. So the parents own this program. Any parents here? This young lady is a parent, I was. And the interesting part of this, we were talking about with the commissioner, I don't think most people in public education understand it when I say to them, I cannot hire one Head Start staff without her approval. Imagine if the public schools did that. Well, I, I don't want to get anybody mad at me, but, but, and not only does she have to approve the hire, the meal plan, the education plan, the facilities plan, the whole budget plan, how much is going where. They're learning as parents, how do I operate? They're becoming leaders. In addition to being parents, they become leaders. And then we get them in a parent council and say, okay, who wants to sit on the citywide ABCD board? Now you're a big deal. So this is a program that has so many moving parts, but the whole idea is clearly to make sure that the child is cared for, but with the parents and with the providers and many of you. So I want to thank you all. In back of the room, the tallest person I can see back there is Michael. Where, Michael, you back there? Yeah, you. <laughs> President of the Urban College of Boston. <clears throat> Give him a hand. Urban College was started by ABCD for many years. It's now separate, doing wonderful things. Two by two, Mike, it's, I just love it. Moved into a baccalaureate. But it was a training ground, and still is a training ground for our staff to get the CDA, to get all of that, and had that, and now we've gone into a two by two, Mike, right? Love it, baccalaureate. And that's how we're gonna build up our workforce. So, and John, and then we have Eva, and we have, oh my God, we have God, all kinds of people back there. And my board members, my bosses are here. Well, I got names. Linda's gone out to move a car. She came in, oh, she's back. She, the, she said, can I park my car here? And they said, yes. Then they came in and said, no. So then she went out and she came back. So Linda Dumas, board of directors, ABCD. Kathleen Flynn, board of directors, ABCD. Ed, board of directors. Stephen Kumar. He's here? 
Stephen, I'm sorry. I said hello. I didn't see you. And uh, Sam DePinna was here. This is a part of the representation of the overall governing board of 51 members who represent the private sector, the public sector, and a big part of the community. And they come together every month. And they're right on top of everything going on in the city. So I have a lot of bosses too. 51 bosses. Wow. Yeah. Boss. <laughs> and, and another one, I have a boss. <laughs> so I, I haven't had it, I didn't have a chance until today to meet the new commissioner. Delightful. I did send you a note, I think. Mm -hmm. And she comes from what, Chicago, someplace. <laughs> I grew up here. Oh, you did? I grew up here. Oh, good. I didn't know that. Where? Yeah. Um, all around, I grew up uh, in Belmont and Newburyport, Merrimack, and then I went to school in Los That's close enough. Yeah. Oh, my God. Look who came. <laughs> Look who's here. <laughs> I, I've been filling in a little bit. You do all right. You're, Not, You're good for 30 minutes. Nothing like you. <laughs> Anyway, I didn't introduce everybody in the room, even though I would love to. I am very, very happy to be here today. Sharon, where are you? Sharon's my, uh, my she's, she's CEO. She, did, she, John, and everybody on this project took the lead. I'll do it again in front of him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the George Whitefront. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for being the person who houses a wonderful, like ask people today, do you know about White Stadium? Do you know about all those places? So by owning this, did, did they tell you I got it for a buck a year for 25 years? Okay. <laughs> and they threw a lot of money in. So the team itself working very closely with the fund, and there's a big plaque around, which I'd like you to see, um, has come up with, I think, again, a facility not only would the community be proud of, but I think the nation should be proud that we in Boston, working with the mayor, and this is not the only occasion we work with the mayor on early childhood and teachers, uh, I think we are far ahead of the rest of the country when it comes to real early childhood education and care. Right, Commissioner? And care. Absolutely. And uh, head start, folks, a wonderful. Yeah, uh, one more. Anna Jean McHong. Anna Jean, stand up. <laughs> Anna Jean is our South Boston Head Start Director for how many years? 24. What? 24. Oh, come on, it's longer than that. <laughs> well, how long you been in? Maybe? How many years altogether? Say that's good. That's good. <laughs> She's retiring next month. She's retiring next month. Anna Jean, thank you so much. And also for all the marathons you ran. And you brought the money back to us, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, coming with us today is the mayor of Boston, Marty Walsh. And Marty, you just do so much. You do so much. And we in the community really do appreciate not only coming today, but also being totally involved in what happens with everybody in the city. Terribly important. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mayor of Boston, Martin Moore. Thank, thank, thank you very much, John. And, and let me, um, I want to thank John and Sharon, everyone here at ABCD. Uh, I want to thank everyone from Head Start. Uh, I want to thank all the parents and the, and, and the community activists that are here today. Uh, I want to thank the folks from the White Fund. Um, I want to thank the Massachusetts Department of Early Education and Care, uh, CDAC, all the families joining us today that are here today. Um, I want to congratulate ABCD on, on this milestone. It's pretty exciting. I want to thank all the other organizations in the room. Um, we had a meeting yesterday in my office and we were talking about housing uh, and we are talking about linkage and job training and inclusionary development, and, and we had that conversation. And we were talking about, the meeting kind of turned into a, a little bit of a complaining session about feeling the pressures on, in different areas, particularly in our communities in Roxbury, Deutsche, Mattapan, and in our poorer communities and our communities of color. And we started talking about all of those different things. And 
it just feels like with the prosperity that's going on in the city, not everyone's benefiting from it. And, and halfway through the meeting, I said, let's wait a second. I said, Let, let's celebrate the good things that are happening. And some of the things that we're doing in the city of Boston when it comes to housing is 20% of all of the housing we've built in the last six, five years have been income deed restricted for low income housing. We lead the country. When it comes to job training and putting money back into the community to truly train people for jobs, we're leading the country. But the gap still remains. And those organizations and the organizations like ABCD are such an important integral part of it. As John was talking, it just quickly sat there. I was thinking about a couple of trips that I took over the last year um, to, to Belfast. And the challenges in Belfast, Ireland, people don't realize it, but the challenges and the poverty that's there and, and the lack of opportunity. Early in the year, I had a chance to go to Cape Verde. And I was in uh, Fogo and I was in Praia. And again, I was looking at the, the sadness in some cases and happiness in others of those areas. And a couple, bunch of years ago, I went to Haiti. Uh, and I was in Haiti and I was thinking about the, the infrastructure. And, and what separates us all is, is a, a person that's poor and struggling is poor and struggling wherever country they're in, whether they're from Ireland or, or the north of Ireland or Cape Verde or Haiti or wherever. But what separates that is organizations like ABCD. What separates that is like people in this room who are committed to fighting inequality, fighting opportunities for better education, fighting opportunities for housing, fighting, fighting for opportunities in economic justice. And I think about how grateful I am to be mayor. John gave me credit. It's not me. It's the people that work with me every day, and it's all of you every day for pushing us. So in this day of kind of snow sleep, whatever's going on outside, in this day of a time where, where things seem somewhat uncertain for a lot of people, um, there's a lot of good going on. And today, today this moment, is a, is a celebration moment right now, quite honestly. Um, a few years ago, City Hall, we put out a call to different organizations. Uh, we needed community partners, uh, trusted community partners, to offer high quality, free kindergarten, early education. It was a very competitive process something that we're very proud of and, and something that we want to do. When I became the mayor, when I was running for mayor, I said we need to have universal pre-kindergarten. You know the studies. The studies say if a four-year-old gets into school, high-quality school, the outcomes are better. They graduate high school, they graduate college, and the outcomes are better. There's, there's, you can't refute the data. The data says that. ABCD was selected because they have a proven track record to meet the needs of a community. This new facility, this beautiful new facility, is going to be a great resource for kids, young people, and certainly their families. Many of you, some of you are here today. I know we're going to hear from a parent in a little while. Edu educators are going to be providing quality early education program. We have an outdoor area that kids can't use today. A computer lab for the learning of the 21st century. I was laughing. I, went to, I visited my old school uh, early, earlier this year. And there was a room that's a classroom, and that used to be the audio visual, AV room, the audio visual room. And we used to go in there, and they'd show a projection of a movie on a, or something on a screen. That was our technology. That was the technology we had when I was in eighth grade. It was a long time ago. But today it's different. But we also have to make sure we keep up with it, because it's not just simply having uh, an iPad or a tablet in a classroom. It's about allowing young people access to this technology all the time. There's also going to be more resources for our parents and our students, modern resources for our parents and our students. It's a, a place that's going to have an impact for years to come, a positive place that's going to have an impact for years to come. This program, ABCD, is a strong partner for years with the city of Boston in some of our most important efforts. It's a key partner in helping us plan the build out universal pre kindergarten in our city, doing great work around youth employment. They're a leader in job training. And they've done this ever since I've been in politics, which I got elected in 1997. I met John back then. And, and this organization was such an integral part in so many different spaces, and still is today. The City of Boston Neighborhood Job Trust supports ABC's, ABCD's First Step program, which trains people in careers in early childhood education, something that is also very important. When new developments go up in our city, they generate funds to support organizations like this. So the, 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 the money that we've gotten from linkage and the money we've gotten from inclusionary development 
of all this great development in the city has gone right back into the community. As I said today, I testified at the State House, and I said, when you see a crane in the city, don't look at the building that the crane is on top of. Look at the opportunities that the crane is creating. Job training, housing, workforce housing, low-income housing, programs, social programs, social services, education, infrastructure, all of those things are under that crane, a big part of that crane. We're making sure that Boston's economy is inclusive and lifts the whole city up. ABCD, ABCD has been a leader in education and job training for decades. As I mentioned earlier, some of the places they work, they also around around housing and food assistance. Immigration, something that's close to my heart. I know there are immigrants in this room. My parents were immigrants, our immigrants. They came to this country in the 50s. Financial literacy, something that's also working with us to make sure that we help people understand what their credit scores mean and understand what it means to save a few dollars. Working with us in our child savings accounts, something we'll be able to scale up, to, we were able to scale up this year and create opportunities. Again, something that's proven that if kids have a child savings account, then there's more likelihood they're going to go to college. And if they don't go to college, we're working the child savings account that if they go into a career, it can help them with the skills and the training they need there. So we're making sure that we're adjusting these different programs to the 21st century to prepare our young people for whatever it is. This organization represents the best in values. It's great to see them take the next big step in their legacy. I want to thank all the people at ABCD, the board members, not just the leadership, the board members, the staff, the, the advisors, the funders, the parents, the kids, the seniors, every single person this organization touches, both here in Roxbury and all over the city. I want to thank you for the incredible work you do. And I want to sincerely thank you for the impact that you have made on thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people and families' lives over a long time. And lastly, I want to thank you for having such a strong partnership with the city of Boston, because we need to work together. This is not about the mayor of Boston, and it's not about John Drew. This is about all of us working collectively together to make sure we continue to lift our communities up. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We are very happy. I think I forgot to mention that we have a um, city councilor, Alfion, and John mentioned her, state representative Liz Miranda, Natalie and John from represent, representative Malian's office, and Stephen from councilor Garrison's office. And we want to thank, and I, there's the Timothy Smith Foundation, which help us build that computer lab yep. that is very helpful for the family. Thank you. And Mr. Mayor, when we came here the first time, this building was a little bit scary. <laughs> but no, but Peter says it has good bones. And I said, what is that? He says, he mentioned the window was beautiful, so we trust we came with Sita and Teresa, remember? And we said, wow. And it's, I feel very honored to be the leader of this beautiful program, not only because the facility is beautiful, because we are really, like you said, touching the life of the children and the family, the most needed. Every child deserves to have a beautiful facility. And the children that we serve, they are the most vulnerable children. They deserve to have. And beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful and excellent and proper facility. So it is my pleasure now to introduce one of the other boss that I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> Commissioner Sam. Mm -hmm. And she knows that we're going to say Commissioner Sam because her last name, one day we will learn to say it. <laughs> so welcome and thank you because also in EEC, Department of EEC was a key funder in this project. Commissioner. Ah, thank you so much, and thank you to uh, echo the thanks um, to all of the players who were involved in this, and really congratulate um, John, Yvette, uh, at Sharon, and just really thinking about um, all of the players it really took to make this happen. 
Um, I, I as, as everyone mentioned, I'm uh, about four and a half months into the job. So I'm very honored, Mayor Walsh, to be at our second uh, opening in Roxbury. So excited to, to really be seeing real investments in the community that, that are impacting children and families. Um, and, and definitely thank you, the legislature, walking into a, a new job and having um, supportive legislature is, is amazing. So Representative Miranda and, and being part of um, this momentum to really help and, and support uh, children and families in the um, across the Commonwealth is really amazing. Um, I have to say, I was telling ter Teresa earlier that being four and a half months in, um, I come, have been in Chicago for, I grew up in Massachusetts, have been in Chicago for um, the last couple of decades and spent some time really grappling with these really big facilities issues and how do you invest in facilities. Um, and uh, I was saying to Teresa, I recently was at a national meeting and spent time think, saying, and we have this amazing program in Massachusetts. I just got there and CDAC does this wonderful work with facilities. And, and they're like, yeah, it's been written about nationally. You're the only person who doesn't know about it here. <laughs> so um, I, it's been such an honor and excitement to come into such wonderful investment in facilities for children and families. Um, and as a, uh, a former preschool teacher, I can say I was not very good at it, but as Yvette has said and seen as she walks around the, the classrooms with me, um, being in a place where uh, you learn in as it, it, the pedagogy of early childhood around the environment being uh, the third teacher in the classroom and really part of what the children need to engage in and having a beautiful environment that you all have built here so that the children can um, engage in, in the, have a, a beauty that reflects their potential um, in their everyday life. And so really, um, really honored to be a very small part of um, a very big project that you all took on uh, and really learning quickly about the wonderful work that ABCD is doing across uh, across the city. Um, and the e EEOST capital grant being part of that, I think we're excited to continue to see that flourish and, and in continued investment in that. Um, but really it's what you do inside the building too that matters. And having you all be able to bring together, as John said, of being able to bring together the people, um, have the parents be such an active part of that, so that it is not—it's um, not just a building where people drop off, uh, drop off their children, but really is um, a place where you can come together, city, state, federal um, entities, and really you bringing them all together to create the transformation in people's lives at, at the community level. So, as I said, very honored and um, very grateful for all the work that you all do every day, and to be a small part of of the team that can help support you in doing that. Um, to that end, I would also like to give a big shout out to our team at EEC, um, Kelly Meehan, Linda Womack, and Cheryl McClellan, uh, who did an enormous amount of work with you guys. And I cannot say that, um, <laughs> as I said, I have a very small part, and they are a much larger engagement uh, and part of, of this process. So I'm um, grateful to, to be part of, um, of a team that's able to support these wonderful initiatives. Uh, I, as I said, really excited about everything you guys are doing, very grateful about that, um, and mostly in, in seeing where you take it next and seeing where we can be supportive. And as we um, at the com across the Commonwealth are trying to identify ways that we can support and foster the kind of programming that you're bringing uh, to Roxbury and really helping um, children live the potential. As, as the mayor said, we know the research. The research is there. High quality early childhood beginning as early as um, prenatal and definitely at birth and, and lasting and continuing through the early grades and into the the transition into elementary school um, is transformative. And we know the research, but it's about how you do it, not that you do it. And we're watching ABCD do it well um, and really make that difference. And excited and to be part of that and excited to, to help you take it to the next level. Um, so thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for all the work. Thank you for the partnership from the city and the Fez and, and to be entering into to um, work at the Commonwealth level that has such a robust network uh, to really be transformative. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. The other day we were in a program. <laughs> and you know, this is the beauty of talking, working with children, right? When we are stressed, we get to the children. And she asked a little girl to take, can I take a selfie with you? You remember that, right? Said, and she said, sure. So can I take a selfie with you? She goes, sure. <laughs> 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 so she's getting that taste of what is the Boston citizen because they are our citizen. And we are all here because they are going to be the future mayor. Maybe it's here. Okay? And we will vote for that candidate. You too, right? Okay, good. 
So it's also my pleasure to introduce, which I think is the most important guest that we have here today. With all respect to all of you, Cindy, our parent. So Cindy, uh, she's She is a parent representing 7th Street at our Citywide Policy Council. And parents are also our bosses. And, and we do all this, and we alone cannot do it, and parents are our partners. So, Cindy, it is my pleasure to introduce you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Bear with me. I'm not really of a public speaker, but when Heather asked me that, Yvette had asked her to um, come and speak. It was an honor. Um, I'm a parent and the parent of rep for Savin Street, Head Start. Um, my daughter, Carmen, attends here. I'm a mother of five, four boys and one girl. Out of the five of them, three of them came to Head Start. My daughter loves this uh, center so much. Even on the weekends, she keeps on asking me, is it Monday? I want to go to school. <laughs> Um, she, she has learned so much in, since it's open in January, which all my family members and friends are like, how old is she again? How is it that she knows so much? And I tell her, she goes to ABCD, Head Start. Um, I don't wait until school age. I want to prepare them. So that's how they got here. Um, I have, been, I have been involved with ABCD for many years, since the mid-90s, um, from summer works to work pathways to um, urban college. Um, I also worked for ABCD from 2000 to 2009 um, and got my associates as human service administration with a concentration in management. My two other children that attended ABCD, I'm very grateful. My 14-year-old is an honor um, student at Boston Collegial um, Charter School. And um, they helped me so much with my nine-year-old. My, na my nine-year-old has autism. And when he was at ABCD, they helped me get all the services that he needed in order to get where he's at today. Today, he's at. West Roxbury at the Linden Pilot, and he's in the third grade, reading at a fifth grade level, which I'm very proud, and thanks to you guys. <laughs> Every day is a struggle being a mother and wanting for your child to succeed. I think with these programs that ABC has um, developed has helped me as a parent, not only me as a parent, but also me involving other parents in coming. To, I, I love to network. If I hear something, oh, you should go here, or have you heard of this, or have you heard of that? Um, very resourceful. Um, my mother calls me the social butterfly that never shuts up. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the one that, if there's resource out there, and I know this, why can't I just give this information out for people who are not like me, a social butterfly, and can't, and are struggling, and need help? I just wanted to thank everyone for today and for being your guest speaker. ABCD is, not, is more than it appears. It's our family and community who cares about each child and their families and making sure they are able to help them persevere and, so, and strive for a better opportunity for their families. ABC, ABCD 7th Street is our family community who truly do care and help us. Thank you. I don't have to speak about my program, she said it all. <laughs> but that's why we are so passionate and we are so honored to be working for this great program. With that said, I want to introduce another of the bosses, <laughs> which is part of our founder, and Marina Winkler. She is a regional director of the Office of Head Start here for Region 1. Marina. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Every time I show up at a meeting where Yvette is, I get a promotion, and I'm usually told I'm someone else's boss, which none of those are true, to be stricken from the record. 
as a federal employee saying that. Um, so thank you for having me. I'm um, very encouraged to be here. I'm delighted to be here. Um, as I was getting myself together to get here this morning, I had this fleeting moment, and I'll share it with you. It's going on 25 years since I moved to Boston. And when I moved here, I moved in September, and the sun was shining and birds were singing and the leaves had this like beautiful yellow hue and people were promising me they would turn orange and then red and it was the a beautiful autumnal moment and i thought boston my new home i am so glad to be here i'm already loving this place about four weeks later it snowed <laughs> and it snowed pretty consistently for about six months and i thought what am i doing here but at that point, I'd already um, fallen in love with Boston. I was smitten. And I was struck by just how people were so passionate about this city. Um, they were tough. They went out in those snowstorms, and they dug out their spots, and they put cones down, depending on where you lived. I was in Brighton. That's what you did. Um, but they were tough. They had tenacity. They had grit. And they were certainly determined to do whatever it took to get where they were going that day. And mostly, you know, for folks that I was interfacing with, they were mostly concerned about getting out there to do the work that's important to them in serving their community. And that certainly epitomizes ABCD and everybody who's involved with this organization, from our teachers, our parents, our staff on the front line each and every day. And um, unfortunately for me, I don't get to see them every day, but I certainly hear about them every day through Yvette and Sharon and John as well. And it's just, it, we just can't go beyond um, extending our thanks to all of you each and every day for what you do. And that determination, despite all those um, things that come up for them around you know, employment and housing and the things that the mayor spoke to. I wish we were able to coordinate our comments. I pretty much was going to say what you were going to say uh, next time. Um, is that, you know, they, they still push themselves every single day to kind of get up and continue on what they're doing in trying to move, again, their children, families, and communities forward. Um, so at our office in Boston, as I was introduced, being, again, some regional director which I'm not, and I'm uh, the regional program manager for the Federal sure. Office of Head Start. It's okay, it's, it's okay. Although when we have our director, um, the, my immediate bosses are in Washington, D.C. Um, Anne Lenehan is one that John mentioned earlier. She is a Boston native and an ABCD affiliate. Folks are nodding their head because they've been around for a while, you know Anne, and she extends her congratulations and it was happy to be able to support this project as well. And Anne and um, our new director, Dr. Debbie Bergeron, um, you know, absolutely understand the needs, the very pressing needs of our, our low-income children and families and the things that they face each and every day in our communities. And not the least of which is one of the biggest ticket items out there, certainly staffing, finding and retaining staff, supporting families that are income eligible. And we are at the federal poverty level primarily um, in serving early Head Start and Head Start children. And facilities, I mean, it's like the so top three items that we continually um, address and try to, uh, try to address every single day. Um, so when you pull up and you see this beautiful new building, it's, um, it just is heartwarming. And I know so many people were involved in getting to today. Um, and again, the they, um, thanks had been extended, so I want to echo those sentiments. Um, with everybody who stood up here, I would be remiss if I didn't mention my own team, Donna Brown, who's a true Head Start champion, and Jeff Arciero, who works in our grants office. Because if you accept federal money, I can pretty much assure you there's a lot of red tape. And um, the folks at ABCD know all too well about that. But we work truly in partnership to try and get to that um, desired outcome, which is to get those doors open and to get our children and family served. Um, so I would offer that. I don't need to explain what ABC does. You could tell that to me in, in better terms. And we'll be able to see the facility. And I know we bet you offered that earlier that I could go into a classroom. I didn't go then because I wouldn't be here now. I would probably be, I'd probably be downstairs with, with the kiddos. But in terms of perspective, and the mayor was certainly able to offer that, and, and Sam, you did too. And we've been working in a very close partnership in the sh few short months that you've been together. But for you all to understand that sort of local all the way up to Washington, DC level of how all this has to come together in conjunction with foundations and, and city grants and state grants and so forth, it, it, takes, it really takes a village as, as the adage goes. And I think that's true of today. It just takes everyone coming together. Um, to do what's right. So in terms of some perspective, I'll share that when we, it isn't just this building, we then funded a grant opportunity that was very highly competitive because we very rarely have the opportunity to put out new funds available to serve additional um, slots for children. 
And in the last number of years, we've been able to fund, in particular, early Head Start childcare partnership grants. Very, very um, specific to partner with states around subsidies to, again, afford more opportunities for low-income families to be able to access services. Again, all the services you're hearing about today. And ABCD, who we'd funded for 50 plus years, I'm going to say before my time, despite the gray hairs, before my time. Um, but we have a long and steeped and storied history together with our office. And I've been there a while now and had the opportunity to kind of come up to the ranks myself. And it's interesting because a lot of grant programs remain stagnant. It's like, I get this grant, this is what we do, but not here. I mean, in the last five to seven years, there's just been so much innovation and a push for more and a push for better. And, and I heard earlier, we want that beautiful building for our low-income children and families. They deserve that and more. So in saying that, our opportunity for these grants, at the time we funded ABCD, not only for the building to support in a very small way the building project that we were able to support, it was the ongoing um, commitment to enroll children and their families, because we see that the whole family is enrolled, not just the child. And, and you all were one of 74 grants in the United States. That's not a lot. We had hundreds and hundreds of applications. It was a highly competitive process. And again, the merits of what you do really um, shone. And we were delighted to be informed that you were being selected and moving forward. And of that one in 74, it was only one of two in New England. We had hoped to fund many, many more slots across New England. And unfortunately, it was just two. But I think, again, what you're doing in Boston and how you intend to serve children and families in this community really um, bore true and we're delighted to see the fruits of that labor today. So, you know, I know as soon as the next opportunity is out there, I'll be getting the phone call that <laughs> ABCD is no doubt throwing their hat into the ring. Um, but we welcome that and we certainly encourage, you know, competition. I think it keeps us on our toes. Um, and by able to show that we're innovative and thoughtful, involving our parents and not just involving them, but truly engaging them in the process, not the least of which I'm sure your name was, um, or maybe not you specifically, but it, it, policy council, our parent membership, not only, again, have the decision making, and as you said, are your boss, they really look at our funding applications as well. So um, this building wouldn't have happened without your parents. So thank you for doing what you do. And I congratulate you all. Thanks for having me. Just a fact, we serve children from two months up to five years old. And the other day when we were counting the classroom, I said, wow, we have 137 classrooms throughout the city. And we also now working in the Mystic Valley. And the nutritionist, health and nutrition service was telling me that we have 574 individual meal plan because we serve based on the children individual meal. So I want to take again this opportunity to thank my team. They do the work. I just come here and talk. And thank you all of them. They are there. And since this is my last moment here, I'm going to introduce the real boss, <laughs> Sharon Scott Chandler. Thank you, Yvette. Well, the beauty of going last is everything has been said. And, and literally, I think everything has been said. So I am not going to take uh, much more time. And, and I do want to go downstairs, all of us, to, or as many that can fit, to cut the ribbon with the mayor. And I know he's, he's got to get going. So I'm going to be very brief. Um, other than echoing the thanks to you, Mayor, for your commitment to early childhood education, to your commitment to um, ABCD and the partnership that we have with you, the George Robert White Fund. Um, I know that Richard DiPiano is here, um, and he's been our contact with the fund. I know the assistant treasurer is here, and we really want to thank you uh, for all your support in making this happen. Um, so in addition to the EEOST fund and Teresa Jordan, where's Teresa? I, wanna, I do want to give a shout out to Teresa Jordan and the Children's Investment Fund, because they have really been pushing this issue about children's space, capital funding for it for many years. And, and this is just part of, part of that partnership. And so thank you, Teresa, for your efforts there. 
again, it demonstrates this day, demonstrates the collaboration, the partnership, that we can't do it alone. And we know that at ABCD. So thank you so much. John already mentioned our team, but I'm going to mention them again. Obviously, Yvette and our Head Start yeah. leader. John Wells and Peter Scalaro and Eva in our property departments. Please, please take a look if you haven't at the um, pictures of the before and after. Just, it hasn't been mentioned, um, but it is in the program. This building, I think, was built in 1929 or so, and it was a health center. And then in '94, it was dedicated to the Rosa Parks daycare center. We are in, in her memory, in that memory, we're rededicating um, or honoring it. And there's a plaque downstairs that I want everyone to see with the trustees of the Georgia White Fund. Um, it was a labor of love, I think, bringing it from then to now in terms of the Rosa Park daycare center closing um, and to what we did. And it was, it's been four years. I mean, in some ways, I hate to say it's been four years, but it just goes to show the effort, the, you know, how much it takes to raise the funds, how much it takes to renovate a building like this, how much it takes to get families involved. And so I just can't say thank you enough to every single person in this room because you've had a part in making this day happen. So without further ado, I'd like you to come downstairs and cut and thank you again. One, two, three.